Hello, YouTube. Here are a few of my pens with gold nibs. One of the recurring questions in the fountain pen world is that: Are gold nibs better than steel nibs? This seems like a simple question, but the answer is rather complicated. So I'll try to break it down to smaller chunks. First of all, one might ask if gold nibs write smoother than steel nibs. The answer is a definite no. Apart from the cheapest or the most specialist nibs, all nibs are tipped. We're a tiny sphere of tipping material, normally called iridium, but it's actually some kind of hard-wearing alloy. It's welded to the tip of the pen nib and then shaped appropriately. So it doesn't matter what the nib is made of; it's just this little bit of tipping material that touches the paper. And the on-paper performance characteristics are determined by how this bit of tipping material is shaped. Then some might say that gold nibs can flex more than steel nibs, giving greater line variation, making vintage gold flex nibs highly desirable. This isn't true either, and to understand this, we've got to go further back in history. Centuries ago. People wrote with quill pens. Flight feathers were cleaned and degreased. A slit was cut along the shaft of the quill, and then the nib was cut around it for writing. Being a springy material, this gave a fair bit of line variation, which was taken for granted. Then came the Industrial Revolution, where pen nibs were made in vast quantities out of sheet steel. Many of them offered a fair bit of. Well, various degrees of line variation, just because the customers expected it. This expectation was still present when the fountain pen came along. As the fountain pen nib is constantly wet with ink, which might even be somewhat corrosive, they had to use gold for the nib, which is a stable material which does not corrode. So the early fountain pens had flexible gold nibs. That's just because of two different requirements. Coming together, be aware that pure gold is a ductile material. If you make a nib out of pure gold, it would be easy to distort, but it cannot recover to its original shape. Other materials have to be added to the mix to alter this characteristic, so the gold content in the nib varies, along with manufacturing processes employed as yet another factor. This can give the nib a variety of physical characteristics. Well, be it hard or soft or springy, but this also applies to steel. When fountain pen became mainstream, two things happened: dye-based, non-corrosive inks, especially formulated for fountain pen use, and corrosion-resistant steel that can withstand being wet all the time. So, steel nibs on fountain pens became possible. Along the line, the need for line variation became less important to the users. So pens became less flexible, and that applies to both gold and steel nibs. For instance, the Parker Fifty One and the Rifters might have gold nibs, but they're all very hard. So it means that a gold nib is not inherently more flexible than the steel one. After all, the most flexible nib would be a steel dip pen nib anyway. It really depends on the shape of the nib, the blend of ingredients that goes into the nib's manufacture. And the actual manufacturing process that goes into making them. On a related subject, some say, all things being equal, gold nibs are a bit softer than steel nibs, as the softness gives it a bit more cushioning effect during writing. As seen above, this is not true either. While some might prefer the cushioning effect, some might prefer a nail, but either can be achieved with gold or steel. These days, gold nibs are, to be honest, more of a vanity aspect than a functional aspect. Those paying a lot for a high-end pen would expect a bit of gold in order to make them feel that they're getting their money's worth. But for me, as someone who looks for odd and old and weird pens for use, it really doesn't matter. But it's still nice to strike gold sometimes. I hope this is of some interest, and I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.